On today's show, we got to break down this big news from the Cleveland Browns and Odell Beckham, the rest of the matchups, Thursday night football. There's a whole lot going on, and one of us looks like a tough guy. Subscribe to this channel, like the show. Have a good time. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out the grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with HelloFresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, I don't need to tell you this, but I'm going to anyways. When your online checking account balance is, is low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. It's like, hey, I accidentally overspent and you get charged for it. Look, I don't have the money. Stop stop overcharging me. You deserve financial peace of mind. Enjoy the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes, and it doesn't affect your credit score. You can get started today at Chime.com slash footballers. That's Chime.com slash footballers because Chime thinks overdraft fees are nonsense. They agree with us. So it's, fi it's nice to see a financial institution taking the mantle and saying, we need to move on. We need to move to the future and stop dinging people because they overdrafted their fee by or overdrafted their account just a little bit. So let's check out Chime.com slash footballers. Banking services provided and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank on Stride Bank and a member's FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased to $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members' use of SpotMe V, $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate, checking account survey, and CRL June 2020 overdraft fees report. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in, you beautiful people out there. Oh, the most beautiful. I, you know, and you, then there's me with a goatee. <laughs> there is you, looking. Uh, as far as a man with a goatee goes, Jason, you're a beautiful man. Thank I you. would, I would call it art because if you call it art. It can't be criticized. So I think you, I think you got some art <laughs> growing on your face. That's that's true. You just, <laughs> yeah. it's art, man. You you don't get it. Yeah, you don't get this. <laughs> um, but you know, when people say, "Oh, you you look pretty good with a goatee," I take that as an insult. If because, you're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> wait, I don't want to look good with a goatee. <laughs> if you're not transporting back to teaching science in the late '90s, I I don't know what else you could be doing right now. I mean, you're a grade school teacher. Also, uh, I trust you a little bit more. We yeah. we should we've never we haven't talked about this on the show, but so Jason was Guy Fieri mm -hmm. for Halloween. <laughs> Something we should mention right away every day, just so that you know why. No, it's not there. yeah, not that part. But no, there was like there was an existential crisis that happened on our company Slack channel where Jason went spiky hair to be Mister Fieri, <laughs> and all the, and then Jason starts asking the questions of. Wait, should I be doing spiky hair all the time? I, I did think about it. I thought about instead of just kind of pushing it down and forward, let's go, let's spike this thing out. Wow. However, however, I never did. So I wish you had. I know, um, you, I know you do. <laughs> Welcome in, one and all. We had a Thursday night football game with a lot of points scored, different quarterbacks. We've got news and injury news. That game was crazy. We've got fantasy forecast part two. We've got the wheel of shame. And, um, well, someone not named Mike is spinning it today. Mm -hmm. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can find the community at jointhefoot.com where I encourage you to head over there because not only do you get an extra episode every week, but if you support us, uh, there's a Matthew Betts Injury Blitz podcast as well that comes out on Friday. He'll take you through the last bit of injury reports and news and what to expect and uh, kind of like our in and out segment from days gone by. He will make sure you're ready to rumble and what to expect from these players because stuff's happening even this morning that we're going to get into shortly that are it has some pretty big implications for your fantasy football team. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but but Mike, Mike, it yes. is it's Friday. Do you understand? Foot Clan Friday. In the biz, we call that. Hey, Mike, push the button. <laughs> <laughs> It is the <laughs> professional lingo. Oh, uh, it's not, you know, it's not Foot Clan Thursday, is it? It's Foot Clan Friday. That's right. So we're giving something away from pristineauction.com this week. One of my second half breakout candidates, Keenan Allen, signed jersey. Jacob Hillegas on Patreon. Congratulations. We're sending you a signed Keenan Allen jersey from pristineauction.com. Congrats. Thank you for supporting yes. the show. Thank you, Jacob. And, um, you can check out Pristine Auction, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Last night's game, oh, if my math man. is correct, that's 75 points. Yep. And math checks out. At one point, this game was 42 to 10. Is uh, that right? I think I, that's, I think that's I, right. I think that was right. Jonathan Taylor is, you know, oh. we, we, we kind of hemmed and hawed about maybe he's the number one guy rest of the season, maybe he's not. He's laying his claim to that potential title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor said, uh, Mr. Joe Mixon, this is what you're supposed to do when you have a matchup against the New York Jets. This is 19 for 172 and two. This is the running back one on the week established on Thursday night. And yeah. I can't help but think whenever I see Jonathan Taylor do this or DeAndre Swift have a breakout game where he's just – Better than everybody else. You know where I'm going. I don't like where you're going because yeah. I think the same thing every perhaps, single time. Perhaps you don't call Patrick Mahomes and ask his opinion on which running back <laughs> to draft at the end of the first round. Perhaps you do not do that. Perhaps you have Jonathan Taylor or DeAndre Swift on your roster instead. It is crazy to me that Jonathan Taylor fell to the second round in the NFL draft. I mean, pre-NFL draft. He was I know I know Mike and I yes. far and away favorite. He's just unbelievable. When when you do what he did in college, how he got to the second round is just a miracle for the Colts and they are saying thank you and he is going to be probably the number 1 running back the rest of the way for fantasy. He's just been dominant. He's like Nick Chubb but kind of gets it all mm -hmm. as opposed to like oh he's the guy Nick Chubb is as talented but then he doesn't he doesn't get to just be the dude. Yeah, he Do doesn't get to be the dude. Uh, Jonathan Taylor usually adds a couple receptions, and we, we've seen him, you know, house. <laughs> He's Jonathan. We've seen Jonathan Taylor take it to the house from everywhere on the field this year. He's been incredible. Yeah, no doubt, and he is he is looking like a league winner um, potentially. Michael Pittman delivering again with the touchdown, five for sixty four. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby. <laughs> Why not? We needed something fresh. City yes. City. Oh, that's great, dude. Do it again. We built this city. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's fabulous. It's good to see you hard at work, Mike. Well done. <laughs> well done, Pity City. Let's it, go. I was in the lab for a couple weeks, and we... <laughs> <laughs> we got where we needed to be. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of work. Um, but no, I mean, Carson Wentz, great fantasy performance again. If you had thrown him out there, you streamed him. It was it was awesome. Um, I, you know, I'm looking at the notes on the Jets side. You know, Mike White, unfortunately, exited with a forearm injury. When I first read this this bullet, I read Mike Wright exited with a forearm injury. Now, I maybe I Mike never. was about to leave the I show. I would never. But, you know... We didn't get to see the game we wanted to see because the New York Jets got behind early by a lot, and that was in part due to the the Mike White injury. Yeah, Mike White looked surprisingly good on those his first two drives, and it was a real shame that you didn't get to see him uh, do his thing. However, uh, it was not a complete lost cause for hopeful players from the Jets because Elijah Moore showed up. Uh, seven for 84 and two touchdowns. Obviously, some of this was garbage time, and by some of this, it was pretty much all of this. But um, this is a guy who, in the draft process, I think we we had some excitement for. He's an explosive guy who obviously started the year um, a little bit banged up and unfortunately had to play with Zach Wilson. And now <laughs> he's had two games where he's 
he's back to back been very very good. Now uh, Zach Wilson will come back, and in theory, Cor you know Corey Davis will be back. But Elijah Moore is someone that <clears throat> I think you should look at next week on the waivers. Is this a sticky breakout? Yeah, I think it could be because of his talent, right? Like the opportunity is going to change, and that gives you caution for just saying, "Oh, it's it's his time." But he is hyper talented. He had the draft capital, and now he's doing it on the field. So, what else are the Jets going to do if not try to get him more involved and establish, you know, the 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 future um, in Elijah Moore? Yeah, you look at the other guys on the team, like Denzel Mims. This sucks. Like Denzel Mims was a really interesting prospect uh, just a couple years, a second round pick, athletically off the charts. And he has had his chance now the last two weeks with Corey Davis out. He's actually been a, you know, the de facto number one. Not number one in, in targets or anything like that, but he's out there running the most routes, taking the most snaps, and he is not he's not earning himself more playing time. He caught a, he caught a pass. Yeah, he did. Uh, and, you know, one for twenty. Pass. Uh and and then unfortunately you saw what happened to Michael Carter when uh when Mike White left the game. Those checkdowns were not replicated by Josh Johnson. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's tough because I feel like the Colts just played. They said, we bet you can't catch up. So we're just going to play no deep balls, no big plays. We're going to take take away the clock and let you pass underneath 50,000 times to finish the game. Um, and maybe guys, they said, Josh Johnson, at 35, we want to give you a, a lasting memory on into retirement. Do you guys know how many passing touchdowns Zach Wilson has on the year? Four. Uh, the answer is four. Yeah. You know how he many has... Mike White has? <laughs> More than that. It's five. <laughs> wow. So And now Josh Johnson has three. Oh my goodness. Like it's I mean, it's hard to it's hard to like if you look at the situation, obviously Mike White play has played better football than Zach Wilson is. Mm -hmm. But you can also look at the situation and go like how does Zach Wilson play good football? He's Never played in the NFL. You go to the team with that situation. I mean, all the metrics say he was he's the most pressured quarterback in all of football. Like, I don't know. I guess I just I give him a pass for now because yes, you, to come into the NFL and be pressured more than anybody else and uh, succeed instantaneously on a franchise that's at the bottom of the league, it just seems impossible. And obviously, yes. Mike White's more ready to play. Mike White was more willing to make an easy play to move the chains, the checkdowns with, with Carter, or, you know, he had checkdowns last night that were just smart plays that you haven't seen from Wilson. He got through his reads really fast. I, I was yeah, very impressed. It was such a shame because I, I really did want to see him play more football. And I felt bad for the man just shaking his head on the sideline. Oh, like, so brutal. this is unbelievable. I get my chance. Yeah. I'm, I'm making the most of it. And now I can't grip the ball. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right. Well, the big news that has been breaking and tweeted about and talked about and speculated on, it's the news that Odell Beckham Jr. is going to be released, uh, officially announced, and he's going to be waived. The team came to a financial agreement to, I guess, lessen the burden on them in some capacity for the rest of the year. And... Now we get to do the speculation of where he might land. Uh, he'll go to waivers. He obviously could be a great addition to a number of teams or a, a potentially great addition. Uh, the teams that stand out to me are Atlanta and Las Vegas. Now, I, I originally thought Las Vegas was the best home, but at the same time, I don't know if you want to bring another personality into that locker room with what they've gone through this year with Gruden and the rug situation. So now I'm starting to think Atlanta might be the best fit. They lost, you know, Calvin Ridley may be gone. They need somebody over the top. What do you guys think? The the timing of the the Raiders restructuring their cap space um, this morning with with uh, one of their players just screams to me that they're putting in a claim. Um, now whether or not he gets all the, I think a lot of people are going to put a claim. Yeah, the in. the Raiders are are you know atop their division. So if other teams put a claim in they, they, they he'll never San make Francisco. it to he'll never make it to the Raiders I, um so yeah Atlanta Kansas is there City. um you know I I would love to see a team like the Jaguars grab him just to watch the world burn um love 
uh, awful things like that happening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think the, you know, the best situation for him would be to clear waivers, sign wherever he wants, go to Kansas City, but I, it does not seem like he's going to clear waivers to me. No, yeah. I don't think he will either. And it's it's this is one of those things where you know we, we all play the game of human nature. You know, oh, if I just did this differently, if I made this change, it would be better. But that's not factoring in. You could have made that change, and things could get a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Like Odo Beckham could go from the Cleveland Browns to the Detroit Lions. That's that's in the ring. You know who needs a wide receiver and needs to win? Win a game, boost some morale. The Detroit Lions. For fantasy, though, I feel like that would be a, a a very good destination. I mean, maybe much better than him going to the San Francisco 49ers, where it's okay, it's Debo, it's Kittle. Uh, there's still Ayuk there. Like, yeah, I, there's nowhere I'm, to go but up for his fantasy value. To be honest, I don't, right? I, I'm talking just for Odell Beckham of thinking that he's that this was like I got out. I got out of the Cleveland Browns. You might end up on a completely losing franchise as you try know, to establish new value i know there's a lot of opinions out there and some people would want us to defend odell beckham in this situation other people's are other people are against him i guess broadly anecdotally i'm just it's like the whole story about if if everyone around you is an a-hole maybe right you're yep. the a-hole yes. being driven out of two cities it's uh, not a good look is and in turn in 29 like these are his best days are formally behind him. I mean, like there is yes. no, there is no way that Odell Beckham Jr. unless he landed in some place where that quarterback is going to throw him the ball fifteen there, times a game. I just don't. I don't, I don't think see there's a, a place. Future. I don't think there's a place. Maybe the maybe the Lions would be the best spot for him, uh, fantasy wise. I think Atlanta I, Atlanta can give him ten targets a game. Atlanta, Atlanta would be fabulous for Odell Beckham. Yeah, Atlanta would would make uh, sense for his fantasy value. I think m most destinations he's going to go to, he's still going. You say there's nowhere to go but up, and I would say I think he can stay exactly where he's at on a different team, which is a, a frustrating. I want to start him. I shouldn't have started him. I did start him. <laughs> Whoopsie doozle. I mean, in his defense, I've watched a lot of Browns games. He's been very open. He's been missed on long plays. Not that Baker, you know, Baker needs to move on um, from the distraction, but I don't know if I, I still think he has something to offer if a team is willing to give him targets. Agreed. Um, let's blitz this news. DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray, what are you guys hearing about their availability for Sunday against the 49ers? It sounds like DeAndre Hopkins is sitting on the uh, side that more than likely he will be out. Kyler Murray has a chance to play, but this is this is devastating news for the Cardinals and for fantasy value. Like if you're playing Kyler Murray, who's hobbled without a superstar wide receiver, I mean that's that's a bad place to be. It's really sketchy, and that's that will be a very difficult decision for people. Of do you move forward with Kyler or do you pivot to a streaming option? Who takes advantage of the absence of Hopkins? Is it Zach Ertz? Probably. I mean, yeah. AJ Green's on the COVID list, right? So he may be out as well. He's yes. a positive yep. test, and Correct. I don't. Do we have a report on his vaccination status? Uh, I, I, I'm not aware. Uh, I think the assumption has been that he will miss this game. That's that's how it seemed uh, from everything I've read. I mean, you would hope that Christian Kirk steps up into that role, and Zach Ertz is fine. But as far as Kyler, he he's someone that is probably a probably a quarterback two this week. If Kyler misses. Cole McCoy is a more capable backup than many others. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it's not the situation where I would say, okay, I'm not starting Zach Ertz or I'm not willing to try a Christian Kirk out. Um, I think Rondale Moore, regardless of quarterback, is a dart throw in DFS just with available targets disappearing. I mean, six targets a week for AJ Green. Hopkins, obviously the number one receiver. And, you know, I would pivot away from James Conner if possible. Like he's, oh, been that's smart. He's been an incredible – just throw him in. He's probably going to get a touchdown. Uh, and, he, like, the thinking could be, well, they're going to have to run more. You just, they're use James Conner. And I just – I think the offense will be not nearly uh, as productive. Taysom Hill upgraded to a full practice, but the Saints are going to start Trevor Simeon. Uh, this does not surprise me. Simeon is a more prototypical quarterback. And with the decision to go with Winston earlier in the year, Simeon looking okay – Hill will be involved 
uh, but I wouldn't play him. Yeah, uh, I, Devon, I, mean, I, De- I don't know if they. I don't know if they can use Hill like they want to though. I mean, right. if he is, if he's now the only backup on the team, you can't risk that he's going to get hurt. Devonte Adams uh, activated from the COVID list. Nice. Should be back. Elijah Mitchell. Return Elijah. To a, <laughs> return to a limited <laughs> practice. Here's here's breaking news. John Lynch, GM of the 49ers, said Jeff Wilson could be activated from the pup and play this week. Oh man. So oh, oh man. We've been saying it for many weeks. Get him. Uh he could be somebody that helps your team. I don't know if it's this week. If you have another option, I certainly would play it. But he could be making an impact before you before you know it. And and with Elijah Mitchell being banged up, like he could leave this game and we could be talking about Jeff Wilson as like the number one waiver ad for next week. Yeah, I, the the whole backfield is I you don't know for sure what to do with Elijah, uh, Jamichael Hasty, uh, J- Jeff Wilson. Like someone's gonna have a decent game. I think uh, I have no idea who to possibly uh, say Kyle Shanahan loves. It's gonna be Trey Sermon at the end of all this. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, um, George Kittle back at practice, on track to play. Not been formally ruled in for this game yet, but if he is, you're playing him. Yes. James Robinson did not practice. Second consecutive day on Thursday. Are we expecting to be without Robinson? That's, yes, as the expectation. Cole Beasley, missed practice again on Thursday. Seems uh, up in the air whether he'll be available. Correct. Devontae Parker, this was big news this morning. It sucks because we've been talking a lot about the upside here and how, how good he looked in his return. Set back this week with the shoulder and hamstring. He's not going to play this week against the Texans. So that's unfortunate. I mean, Mike Gesicki is a smash play. He already was. And now the target, the targets are guaranteed for Gesicki in this mm-hmm. game. Yeah. Uh, Gesicki has already been someone that you're, you're starting, but absolutely DFS, um, you know, throw him up. Saquon. He is back at the facility. It was a false positive test, but you still have the ankle to deal with. Are you guys leaning one direction on whether he'll be back out there? I think he'll still miss with the with the week ten. They got they have the bye week next week. Am I remembering that correctly? Um, they do. Uh, That's correct. I, I'm almost positive they do. Yeah. yeah. So I would think he'll be out for one more week. All right. Giants wide receiver update. Kenny Galladay limited in practice. First time he's been back in a while. Kadarius Tony limited. Sterling Shepard didn't practice. Dante Pettis was placed on IR. So. Oof. Um, is there a chance Kenny Galladay has relevance for fantasy owners yes. rest, or managers the rest of the season? Yes, absolutely. If he and if he's it's possible he's on your waiver wire, I would go scoop him up. All right. Did, any other did big you, Did you hit the news? David Montgomery news? Uh that he is eligible to return and yeah. has a chance of being back this week, but yeah. where are you guys leaning with that? Uh again, with with Barkley, I lean that he'll be out, but this like if he's in, that's a big momentum shift for for two starting running backs because uh, like Khalil Herbert goes from the dude to you have no idea what the timeshare is going to be in. on Monday night yeah yeah so, and, they, and they they very well could if they're bringing him back this early before the bye week you could see what people fear which is like a 50 50 timeshare just giving him a little be- bit of work but I don't think that that would necessarily mean that after the bye week it would still be that you know, complete shared backfield. Yeah, don't freak out just yet. Wait and find out if Montgomery news comes through later today, tomorrow. But if you go into Monday night and you don't know, are you right. trying to find a pivot option from Herbert already? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think even if Montgomery is there. You just write it out? I, I Against think the Steelers? Would... Oh, man. <laughs> I think you probably try to pivot. That's my. That would be my my case. But speaking of the Steelers, Eric Ebron did not practice on Thursday. Oh, the youth! So he will continue to be Luth. I don't know if you can. <laughs> once you're once you're Luth, can you be put back in like fully Luth? Uh, when he hits thirty five, <laughs> I think he'll be he'll start to start to tighten up. Yeah, start to slow down. Yeah. Uh, join the dot com for the injury blitz podcast. We'll keep you up to date on socials as well at the FF Ballers on Twitter for injury news and updates. That was today's news and notes brought to you, of course, by Sleeper. They'll keep you in the know, the leader in breaking news alerts. You can download the Sleeper app and join the breaking alerts channel. And uh, you guys want to do that sound effect real quick for me? Yeah, that'll let you know whether or not David Montgomery's back. 
And uh, we've got a forecast to get into. We do. Before we do that, uh, get to the rest of the match, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Headspace. Are your thoughts running in endless circles in your mind? You know, with the stresses of this last year, it's more important than ever to practice living healthier and happier lives. So what if a few minutes was all it took to change your relationship with stress, anxiety, and transform your life for the better? That is the power of meditation with Headspace. Look, our thoughts, they can be confusing enough. Meditation doesn't have to be. Headspace is your convenient dose of meditation, mindfulness, and sleep exercises to relieve stress, anxiety, help you get a good night's sleep, and it's all in one app, making it easy to catch your breath and make time for your mental health. And it's one of the most science-backed meditation apps in the world, proving meditation works. A study proves in just two weeks, Headspace can reduce your stress by 14%. I have used Headspace. I am a big proponent of meditation. You take that time to yourself. It, like, if you've never meditated before, I get it. It, it seems kind of like a, a strange, almost like a silly thing, but it is not. It is legitimate. It helps, and it helps you know, it melt that stress and that anxiety away by taking that time for yourself, and Headspace can help you do that. Find some Headspace at headspace.com slash footballers and get one month free of their entire meditation library. This is the best Headspace offer available. Go to headspace.com slash footballers today. Headspace.com slash footballers. And we want to thank Keeps for helping us keep our hair. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. One out of three on this very show has experienced that more than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. There are two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both of them. It is low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month, and Keeps offers the generic versions that come in discreet packaging. It's very simple. It's very stress-free. You get a convenient virtual doctor consultation, the medication delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we're back into the Week 9 matchups. Yesterday's show talked about the Browns, Bengals, Broncos, Cowboys, Texans, Dolphins, Falcons, Saints, Raiders, Giants, Patriots, Panthers. So if you want to hear those games broken down, you can scroll back to yesterday's show. Seven games left. Let's start with the Buffalo Bills at 5-2 and two with the, uh, the utter privilege of traveling to Jacksonville and taking on the 1-6 and six Jaguars. The DK Sportsbook line here, Bills minus 14. The over-under is 48 and a half. And, I mean, there is a clear path to, to what – I mean, <laughs> you, I just don't know what the storylines are here because you don't play a lot of Jaguars anyway, and then you probably don't play them against the number one defense against quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers – so no, I mean, yeah, I'm not playing a Jaguar. There's only one that I would even Marvin look Jones. At. Do nope. you bench him? Yep. Yeah, like I would. Full, would you play Brandon Ayuk against Arizona over Marvin Jones? I would. I mean, here, Devonta here's, Smith against the Chargers over Marvin Jones. Definitely. Um, Kenny Galladay if he's activated over Marvin Jones. Oh man, if he's active, it's sure. tough with the Monday. But your if you grandmother, knew for sure. your grandmother over Marvin Jones. Rest in peace, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So look, there's been three times that the Bills have been double digit favorites, and all three have hit the under. And the reason why they've hit the under is not because of the Bills uh, scoring uh, not enough points. It's because their opponents scored ten, zero, and eleven total points. The best player that the Jacksonville Jaguars have is James Robinson, who currently appears to not be playing. If they don't have James Robinson, it, I said there's one player I might look at, which is Dan Arnold, just because tight, tight end. ends are, you know, there, there's just not as many to choose from, and they're going to throw the ball. So, you know, I say, ah, I'm going to bench Marvin Jones. They're going to, he could have nine or 10 targets in this game, but. He could have nine or ten targets and end up with two for 34. Devontae um, Parker just had a nice game against him last week. Devontae Parker, like, always does. Not, not always, but he is, like, the one player who has managed to be able to to actually score fantasy points on the Bills. It's it's wild. Maybe it's just the the play style of, of how good he is at a 50-50 ball. 
But the yeah. Bills are number one. Yes. Against quarterbacks, they are number one against running backs. They are number one against wide receivers. It's like there's just not. I mean, they're number eight against tight end. They suck against tight end. Um, it's it's just I don't trust Trevor Lawrence yet. I don't trust him to be able to get the job done. Um, and so that's my fear. I don't know if it's too broad of a brush to paint with to just simply bench them all. But if the Jaguars, like the, it, there's a non-zero chance that the Jaguars get shut out, like just complete sure. don't score. Um, that's in the range of outcomes, you know, f fewer than 14 points seems like a guarantee. Now that if they get 10 points, I mean, someone got a touchdown. I just don't want to, I don't want to play in the fire. Dawson Knox is going to be out. So you're not going to get a chance to play him in this juicy matchup against Jacksonville, which is unfortunate. Uh, Stephon Diggs is always in your lineup. Josh Allen's the number one quarterback. Josh Allen. He's excellent. He's excellent. Uh, you know, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary. You know, you talk about the games hitting the under. This game could get put away. It could be a shutout. And both of those guys could supply enough in a flex position this week. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I, I love Zach Moss. I think Singletary will get enough work. Uh, uh, my question here for uh, just on the other side real quick. If Robinson is out, Carlos Hyde will see a ton of work. Not that it, the matchup sucks. I get that. But it's going to be a lot of volume, probably three or more receptions. Would you play Carlos Hyde without Robinson over someone like uh, the timeshare guys, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon? No. No. Would you would you play him over let's see Zach Moss and Devin Singletary? No. No. Uh what about Mike Davis against the Saints? No. Uh well, hmm. Yeah, that's about where he lives. I think I would go Carlos Hyde. Boston Scott? I'd play Boston. I would play Boston. Okay. All right. Uh, Adrian Peterson? Oh, you know, AP. two guys two guys you got off the waiver wire? Yeah, it's definitely AP. Yeah. Um very positive news around Adrian Peterson. Uh, that we'll get into on that matchup. The Minnesota Vikings at three and four take on the Baltimore Ravens at five and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Ravens minus six. The over-under is 50 points. 50. Um, 50. <laughs> so, you know, disappointing week last week offensively for the Minnesota Vikings. Probably throwing a lot of doubt into what to expect right now. Jefferson with a, with his worst game of the year. Kirk Cousins couldn't take advantage of the Cowboys' defense. Where are you on that side of the ball? Are we expecting it to be pretty tempered because of being on the road against the Ravens? Because part of me thinks that – I know Mike Zimmer gets a lot of crap. But one thing that I've seen from him before is that you, coming off a loss, they seem to compete. So I, I guess I'm curious where you guys are with this. Uh, you know, Baltimore is going to be able to put up some points. So is there opportunity on Minnesota side? Yeah, the, I, I think there is. The way that I view, I think the Vikings are much better than they're showing on primetime against the Cooper Rush Cowboys. They had a very, very disappointing game. Uh, you know, there's been, obviously even beforehand and for years now, there's been talk of Kirk Cousins and primetime not necessarily being the best. Uh, the Vikings completely pooped the bet. Um they are better than that. However, the Ravens are good. The Ravens are at home. The Ravens are coming off a bye. So it's a it's a difficult matchup. I'm not looking to start Kirk Cousins. Um, I don't think he's a smash play, but I he is still a good quarterback that if you're in a pitch or certainly a two-quarterback league um, would be a, a startable asset. Uh, I'm going to start Justin Jefferson. I'm going to start Adam Thielen both. They've been, you know, Justin, Jeff Justin Jefferson's been too good and Adam Thielen, um, you know, as – has just found the the end zone and the the intermediate level where Kirk Cousins is playing really good football. That's where he's been living. So there are there are um, I think you manage your expectations on the Minnesota side. Um, obviously, Tyler Conklin's my start of the week because Baltimore's not been good at, against guarding the the tight end. I don't think you're going to have smash plays, but I'm I'm not afraid of the matchup. Latavius Murray is going to be out. Breaking this morning, so you have Devonta Freeman, Lev Bell, Tyson, who got in the game last week, and um, <sighs> I mean, this is like uh, roulette. I mean, uh, but all the chambers are filled, like we said yesterday. It's not yep. the, the odds of it going well is is you're, you're waiting for a touchdown to happen, 
You know, there's part of me that, you know, I watched the game last week. I see Tyson. I'm like, this guy, we all know it. He's got more juice than the other two combined, but might not matter. No. Yeah, I mean, Latavius would be the guy, or uh, Freeman. Uh, Freeman would be the guy here um, if you wanted to start one. But, I mean, he was, he was the guy last week with four carries. That's not something you really want. So I think we've got to go with the Carlos Hyde uh, barometer check. Here, would you rather start ah, the Carlos Hyde. Devonta Freeman, or is this the level where you would go Carlos Hyde in a full workload, uh, assuming James Robinson yeah, yeah. is out? I'd go Carlos. I'd just take the volume. Yeah, I think I would too. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Hollywood, you can play him, but Rashad yep. Bateman, we've got some report on practice this morning. He's been – did he not practice? Percy? Unseen What's the story? in the open portion of practice. So that – Invisible. Prop yeah, that's right. So he he's either got that was, Aaron Donald suit from the commercial, right? He's mm -hmm. cloaked or <laughs> he's um, cloaked. <laughs> dealing with some kind of issue. So I would. It's too early. We don't have the official practice report, but I mean, the, the reality is he was not practicing when the team was practicing. So something is going on there. Uh, that gives me more confidence in Marquise Brown, who was Marquise Brown has been awesome. He's been awesome for a year. Um, the worries were primarily centered around Rashad Bateman coming in and taking a piece of the pie. Um, I think Marquise Brown's a very good play this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't argue with you. The Vikings 27th against opposing fantasy wide receivers, and if they can put up some points on offense, which they should be able to do against Baltimore, you're going to see opportunities for Hollywood. Tyler Conklin is a sneaky start at tight end. We Kong, Kong. Yesterday, somebody called him Tyler Conklin. Konkowski? Oh, see, it doesn't play oh, when you say it yeah. out loud. Yeah. When you read it, it, it made a little bit of sense. But out loud, no, not good. Tyler Konkowski? <laughs> there you go. Just stick with Konk Konk. The, uh, uh, we did have news that the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins, did return to practice. So <laughs> I, I, I'm saying I anticipate he'll be on the field. Just, okay. Just passing no, that I, along. I just had a an independent laugh as though I had never heard the word Lizard King before. Oh. And we just casually refer to a human being as the Lizard King. Because and that's just what happens. He's the king of the lizard people. And that, you know, I guess that's why we call him that. Yeah. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers at four and three, taking on the Philadelphia Eagles at three and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Chargers minus two. The over-under is 49 and a half. It's been disappointing on offense for the Chargers for a couple of uh, weeks in a row, even on both sides of the bye. It's been disappointing. And you saw the the Ravens shut them down uh, this past week. You saw the Patriots. I mean, those are two tough matchups, but Justin Herbert wasn't able to overcome, and Mike Williams wasn't able to overcome, and that, that part stinks. They're two-point favorites on the road, and you did have an impressive performance by the Eagles last week, but it was against Detroit. So how do you see this game laying out? Do you think this one has a chance of hitting the over and being more of a fantasy bonanza for, for fantasy managers? I would I would love to see that because there's so many players on both sides of the ball that you um you know have have hopes in for fantasy matchup wise these are two teams that have been easy to run on and difficult to throw on um, either because they've been so easy to run on and unnecessary um, in the Eagles case or in the Chargers case because they've got a really good defense against the pass so I I do worry a little bit more about the upside of Devonta Smith. Um, you know, the, the pass, the receiving options for the Eagles, it doesn't line up well for them. Oh, I'm out. You're I'm, out? Yeah. O I'm, o -U -T? I'm, I'm O U T trying my best to not play Devonte Smith against the chargers. Does he really, here's a question. Cause I think fantasy managers, like he's on the edge of, of release category for sure. a lot of people. And I think he hangs on because he's the young rookie. Does he actually have upside? It was my question. Cause you said you're worried about the upside. Is there actual upside for Devontae Smith and with the nature of this offense? There's and upside yeah, there's upside on the season. I don't think that there's as much upside this week. I mean, you you've seen the flashes, right? I mean, ten targets, seven receptions, hundred and twenty two yards um in a game. Like he, there there is certainly upside because of the talent that he has, the draft capital that they put into him. Um but that was a, that game was against the Kansas City Chiefs. One of the easiest defenses to throw the ball on and now you're playing against one of the most difficult so yeah I, I think you're right to pivot away I would not drop uh Devonta Smith though uh, do you agree with that Mike yes uh Boston Scott Jordan Howard Kenneth Gainwell 
You're playing Boston Scott. It, this matchup is hilarious because you have both defenses not allowing points to fantasy quarterbacks, not allowing fantasy points to wide receivers, but giving up big points and fantasy wise to the running back position and the tight end. So it's it's all this is a mirror match here where Austin Eckler is a smash play. Boston Scott proved to be at least one week in, and with that's all the information we have with the, to go off of right now. He was the lead guy it, for the for the first quarter. He was the guy we had. You saw two uh, two goal line uh, touchdowns from him. Yes, Jordan Howard came in and stole some of that work, but this is the information that we have. So I think that Boston Scott against the Chargers, he's in a good spot. That if you picked him up off the waiver wire, he's going right in as a running back too. Jordan Howard, maybe if you want to hope that a touchdown shows up for him, but due to uh, the Chargers defense being just overall better than the Detroit Lions, I'm not. I'm not chasing the Howard points this week. In in three of the last four games, Mike Williams has been under four fantasy points. Brutal. Do you bench him? No. Yeah, I, I don't bench him because you could you could say the same thing in reverse. And so such and such of his games, he's been the number one wide right. receiver out there. You got to take. Well, you can't the, say that over the last four games. <laughs> sure, you can't. You can't inverse the last four games. But you can flip it and say he'll the see first. Darius Slay. Yeah, I'm and still, they they give up twenty three fantasy points in total. I'm I'm playing him still. Yeah, they are. Um, they're good against wide receivers on the course of the season. If you look a little bit deeper, like they shut down. They only gave up six fantasy points last week to the Detroit Lions wide receivers. Uh, a couple weeks earlier, only twelve points to Carolina and the Sam Darnold experiment. When Tampa Bay was there, they scored thirty points to the wide receivers. When the Raiders were there, thirty one points uh, for the wide receivers. So. I, I think the Chargers are going to have a, a much easier time than um, the Detroit Lions had. But Slay is good, and Slay presumably will be on Mike Williams more than Keenan Allen. So I think Keenan Allen's the play here. Dallas Goddard's my start of the week at tight end. He should be great yeah, against him. against the Chargers defense. Mm -hmm. And then Jared Cook has an opportunity against the 28th ranked. Yes, he does. Eagles D. So does Donald Parham. I mean, we'll see. The last three tight ends to face Philadelphia, O.J. Howard went 6 for 49 and a touchdown. Foster Moreau went 6 for 60 and a touchdown. And T.J. Hawkinson went 10 for 89. So uh, it's right out there in front of Jared Cook. And if Slay slows Mike Williams down, that's even more reason for Jared Cook to have a big game. Uh, the Green Bay Packers at 7-1 and one take on the 500, the 4-4 four and four Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line is Chiefs minus 7.5. The over-under is 48 and a half. This game opened at a 55.5 over-under. It's all the way down to 48 and a half because of what's happened with Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers will not be the quarterback in this game. The Chiefs are heavily favored. And, you know, it's a matter of confidence checks on the Packers options, really. You know, De Devontae Adams, I don't think anybody's going to sit him regardless of the quarterback situation. No. Correct. Um, but how how successful can Aaron Jones be because his success this year has been predicated on targets. Last week was a good game for him, but he had 11 targets. And uh, we we know from last night that the, the a quarterback change can destroy a, a, a running back. I think Aaron Jones is can have a great game this week. I, obviously, so far this season, a lot of his success has been predicated on the passing game, but we've had plenty of uh, evidence of Aaron Jones crushing it on the ground. He's just a really talented player, uh, similar to Alvin Kamara, where it's like some games he's just completely a receiver, and some games he's getting rushing touchdowns left and right. Um, Aaron Jones is kind of the poor man's Alvin Kamara. I'm going to start him here. Uh, th this is... Look, the Packers are a better team than the Chiefs. They like team top to bottom, the Packers are better than the Chiefs right now so far on the year. Obviously, the quarterback change is a you know, a little mini nuke that's been dropped into this matchup, but I think we shouldn't overreact and say that the Packers aren't going to be good. They're well coached. They've got time to plan for this. The Chiefs have been a bad defense. A seven so do you, and a half. Are you picking them to cover because I I, I would have pick it them the other to cover. Way. I would pick them to cover, yes. Ooh, I think the Chiefs at home just might. I, I just don't see any way, shape, or form that the that Jordan Love can can get this done. 
can score enough points. Mike, where do you, where do you weigh in? I that the touchdown and a half. I lean on the the Green Bay side to cover. Like we've seen plenty of quarterbacks perform well against the Kansas City Chiefs, and and Love is in a he's in a good situation that he has a his he has weapons at his disposal. My question uh, on the Packers side for you guys: Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard were out last week, and that turned into a very different game plan for the Packers of AJ Dillon, who had been just you know occasionally getting work. 16 carries, and that turned into 78 rushing yards. Like, A.J. Dillon was a focal point of the offense. Is there any way that we see that happening again? Absolutely. I mean, you lose Aaron Rodgers, and that's that's what I'm talking about. It's a good you team. It's a well-coached team. They're going to use A.J. Dillon. They're going to try to slow the game down, get an ugly win. or A.J. Uh, Dillon or the Carlos Hyde alone barometer. Check. I would I would play A.J. Dillon. Okay. Yeah, I like A.J. Dillon this week. I think he's he's an interesting play. Okay. Uh, Daryl Williams still had the better. Uh, he still was out there and getting use, but Derek Gore obviously got involved, had the touchdown. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm playing Daryl. I'm not playing Derek okay. yet. I'm not chasing those points. And then uh, Tyreek, Travis Kelsey, and Patrick Mahomes are all locked into your lineup. Hopefully, we see some bounce backs from Travis Kelsey. Uh, do you have any concern for him right now in terms of? Like has uh, the ceiling been brought down by by an unfixable offensive problem? No, no, I think it can be fixed. Chiefs have not covered the spread in six of eight games for what it's worth, and the Kansas City games have hit the under in three straight. Maybe that's why the line has dropped so quickly. Um, anybody else from this game, or can we move on? Moving on. The Cardinals at seven and one take on the San Francisco Forty Nine ers, sitting at three and four. The DK Sportsbook line is now wow, Forty Nine ers minus two. Um, that has moved. That should tell you something about the confidence level in Kyler being out there. Games in San Francisco and the over-under is now 45 points. Uh, Kyler has not practiced. He has been staying off the ankle. And like Mike said, the indications that we have right now is we're leaning that he will not be available for this game along with DeAndre Hopkins. Right. We talked a little bit about it earlier. Mike's pivoting off of James Conner, not chasing touchdowns when you don't have the same offense out there um you know much like the previous game with jordan love arizona's been a team that has overcome uh adversity this year missing their coach some injuries they do get rodney hudson back in this game and the running game with chase edmonds is one i i'm intrigued by because a well-coached team is going to shift from you know the kyler centricity to perhaps using Chase Edmonds more and Chase Edmonds is a receiver and without Hopkins and AJ Green he may be a beneficiary that maybe goes under the radar compared to Zach Ertz or a Christian Kirk yeah I would I would certainly prefer Chase Edmonds over James Conner this week for you know they're they're the underdog and they need to to th have people to throw the ball to this is really probably the most confusing game of the week both sides of the ball because you're you really have no clarity on the receiver receiving core. You have no clarity on the quarterback situation. And then on the other side, you've got the whole conversation we brought up earlier of Elijah Mitchell and Jamichael Hasty and Jeff Wilson and Trey Sermon. I mean, Debo is locked. Debo is in and he will be great. George Kittle's a tight end, so he's in. And everything else, front to back, and Zach Ertz is probably locked. Outside of those three guys, I we, you know, people I see in the show doc, like people want permission to pivot from Kyler. Yes, you have permission. Yeah. Kyler could just have an awful game if he has started. Um, and that, that can easily go to everyone else here. This could be a really yucky game. I do think someone has a good fantasy game at the running back position for, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. I would put Elijah Mitchell in that spot. That's who I would peg. Um, but I'm not, 100% sure it's going to be that he's even active. Yeah, that's that's how I see it as well. And then uh, did you casually leave Brandon Ayuk's name out uh, off of your list there, Jason? Contractually. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was that casual, but I certainly left his name out. Okay, so you you, you aren't taking the, the last couple of weeks as positive signs for Ayuk re returning and like 
Seven targets last week, a season high 88% of the snaps have turned into four for 45. That's not like a that's not a breakout, but that's that's okay. That's that's a passable wide receiver three. And then I don't know if you guys saw the report of Yeah, he played his butt right off. Yeah, he, well, we had that. He had played his butt off, and then uh, I believe yesterday or or the day before I saw a report of they had it. Ayuk and Shanahan had a sit down, and there was quote words exchanged, and kind of since that happened, that has been the it, a turning point here for for Ayuk season. Yeah, it's, an, it's a, right now. It's an ongoing fantasy investigation. I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Mike, Mike is lay. Mike is that whole sentence was Mike laying down the leaves over the trap in the woods, <laughs> one leaf at a time, and saying, "Jason, come here." And what come I did. Here. What I would like to do is I would like to get in my car, turn it around, and drive as fast as I can the other direction and say, that could be a beautiful path um, that you could walk down. I'm not even willing to attempt to find out. Didn't you say something either on the Spotify Green Room show or recently where you said if you haven't had the experience of starting Ayuk or yes. something like that, if, go if, for it? Yeah, if you have not been hurt by Ayuk, go ahead. There are things... You, you, he's willing to hurt you too right but but you but you <laughs> i'm doing you it did you know that i'm doing oh, it. oh yeah yes yeah. see see that's, because there's nothing better than me me if if he plays well for me this week jason i can see your face jay if he plays well for me this week <laughs> and die. he's played poor for you all year I have to put him in, man. I got some bye weeks. I, I'm looking at the situation, and I Take said it. The, that was my point. Is that I think Brandon Ayuk at this point is <laughs> you might ha like there is there are situations where Ayuk is in a starting roster. It, this is not an auto bench for that's Ayuk. right. That's right. And um, good luck. Kill good me. luck. <laughs> the Tennessee Titans at six and two take on the Los Angeles Rams at seven and one. This is the Sunday night game. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Rams minus seven. The over-under is 52 and a half. <sighs> the lack of Derrick Henry is demoralizing, but we yep. must move on, and the Titans are six and two, and they are a well-coached team that is going to figure some things out. Um, Adrian Peterson, he's been signed to the active roster for the remainder of the year. They have been exceptionally impressed with him from the get-go, the quote earlier in the week. Something to the extent of we're not going to knee jerk change the philosophy of this team. We're going to essentially what I imply, what it was implied to me was we're going to basically plug and play Adrian Peterson into the role that Derrick Henry was in and try to run our offense. Uh, the confidence that the team came out later and said, you know, that he looks great and they're impressed with him only adds to that for me. So I think that's what they're going to try to do. I think they're going to try to come out and have the same level of success with Adrian Peterson. Now, yeah, obviously, they're, they're not going to. They're not going to have the same success, but maybe they have 80% of it. I, I would agree that that is how I think that they're going to proceed. If if this was an ACL tear for Derrick Henry and he was going to be gone for the entire playoff run, um, they would have to pivot. They would have to figure out what's best for their team personnel-wise, but they expect to have Derrick Henry back. They're pretty much locked into the playoffs just because of uh, their division and the uh, double wins over the Colts. So they've got to they've got to keep doing what they do best. I it's hard when you lose Derrick Henry on one side of the ball and you gain Von Miller on the other side of the ball. It's really easy for me to just look at the Rams coming in here and dominating. But I I have a lot of respect for Mike Vrabel, and every time that I have doubted the Tennessee Titans, um, they are they they get the job done. So. I'm going to kind of trust the um, history of the Vrabel-led Tennessee Titans to figure out enough to where fantasy relevance will be had here. Obviously, A.J. Brown's been dominant. I think he continues to dominate. He's one of those guys that you just – you can't really do anything about. He's bigger, stronger, faster, uh, like a like his former college teammate D.K. Metcalf style. Um, Tannehill is a question to me. I Would don't you play want... Ryan Tannehill or Kyler Murray? Yeah. You knew I was going to ask it. I did know that. <laughs> I'm playing Kyler Murray if he's active. Okay. You guys are a little bit lower on him than I am in terms of the upside for Kyler on the week. All right. And so uh, at my side of the running backs, I, the, Adrian Peterson is very interesting. Uh, seeing how, they, how much volume they do actually give him because Derrick Henry was – the volume was insanity of uh, his his share that he was getting of the of the running back attempts. 
Jeremy McNichols is still in play for me. The Rams, you know, they they aren't the same Rams as uh, yesteryear, where they, you can get fantasy points from the running back position. And if I remember correct, I think they've given up like the eighth most running back um, receptions. So like running backs, that's kind of where offenses are trying to target them is is dumping it off to the running back, and that would be McNichols. So I I see both of these guys in play as we try and f try and see the Titans reveal what they're going to do with the running back situation. Who do you like more? I like Peterson more. I like Peterson more. I like McNichols more. Daryl Henderson's locked in. Stafford. Yep. Um, same goes for Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. We were talking about Ayuk earlier. Would you play Van Jefferson in this matchup against a very bad Titan secondary? Yes. Or would you play uh, Ayuk? I'd play Van Jefferson. The, I, I would as well. You've seen the, uh, the the correlation of Deshaun Jackson. Like When Deshaun Jackson's doing his thing, it's at the expense of Van Jefferson. And that has that shifted in the last couple of weeks. And now Deshaun Jackson's not even on the team anymore. So I think Van Jefferson is going to – stabilize not that he's a a he's not going to be consistent every single week but i think his opportunities will stabilize marvin jones or van jefferson i'd van. play i'd play van van jefferson i mean tutu really? atwell's gone as well i mean van jefferson tutu, tutu, is tutu atwell was not ever there no i know but the the point is he is he being van jefferson is now a 90 percent snap player um on a great offense i know it's hard to play a uh, wide receiver three with confidence, but he is locked into that role, and and I want a piece of the offense. Are you guys done with Tyler Higby? He's, he's a tight end. Yeah. Like no, you can't no. be done with him. He's going to have his matchups where it's okay. He's certainly been disappointing this year. Didn't go into that hopeful uh, step up role. Well, when you have Cooper Cup st taking everything for the passing game, there's there's nothing left for Tyler. Yeah, Cup's been very selfish with his dominance. <laughs> the Chicago Bears at three and five take on the four and three Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday Night Football. The DK Sportsbook line here: Steelers minus six. The over under is thirty nine. Um, th thirty nine is not a lot, guys. I don't know if you knew that. That's that's not a lot of points. I am aware. Um, let Let's just get right down to it. I mean, are you playing any Bears? I mean, if if David Montgomery was active, would you play any Chicago Bears? No, no. Okay, if, and if, if he's, he's not active, you would play Khalil Herbert. Correct. Yep. That's the Bears. End of list. <laughs> okay. Next team. Um, only one Pittsburgh game, by the way, has hit the over in the entirety of 2021. Oh, nice. So, some. I think what we've been prone to do, or players have been prone to do, is say this is the week that Pittsburgh has a blow up week. Pittsburgh doesn't have any blow up weeks. They sometimes win, but they don't have blow up weeks on offense. That's just not what they do. Moderately inflated. Yeah, I mean, like, they score slightly. They score what – they stop the other team from scoring, but they, they score what you expect. Big Ben has never been playable. Najee's always playable. He is just too, you know, yeah, he's too awesome. much of this offense. He's averaging 17.7 fantasy points per game and has been a top 12 running back every single week. Mikey brought him up as maybe the – After the you know, week one, dud. Yeah. Week, week what one. What did I say? Didn't I say since every, week one? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I missed that part if you said it. Um, that's okay. That's okay, Mike. Um, <laughs> I'm all the way over here. So it takes what, like eight minutes for my voice to get there. Uh, Deontay Johnson. Yep. He's a lock. Jamar Chase and Deontay are the only wide receivers to score double digits every single week. I I have, I have him in my dynasty league, but I just can't get him anywhere else. Like I've tried to trade for him. I want the automatic nature of Deontay Johnson. Like he is automatic every yes, week. Is guaranteed points and I can't get them because other people are smart yeah it's tough and as much as we love saying the Muth is Luth um, I don't think this is a great matchup for Pat Fryer Muth um, I would look elsewhere uh, if you can um, I would rather start Tyler Conklin um, over yeah I would probably start Higby I mean the Bears have been really good against tight end is a very low over under you're you're hoping that Pat Fryer Muth gets a touchdown and if he doesn't um <laughs> You know, it's it's. I I think I think if if Conklin and Fryermuth don't get a touchdown, <laughs> then Conklin will outscore the Muth. Uh, I am not I am not in any way, shape, or form laughing at your analysis. I think that's accurate. I am, however, laughing at the fact that Kyle, uh, the Borgogan, has decided to rebrand Jimmy Grandpa to Jimmy Bedpan. Um, oh no! 
He ran oh, 40. No. He ran, he's run 46 routes this year. And according to Kyle, he has the amount of fantasy points as Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> so I they, found that analysis very humorous. They brought him back and paid him so much money. His elusive rating is zero so far this year. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this is not, I mean, he's had an illustrious career. Yes. I was watching some yes. uh, some old Saints highlights the other day. Oh, it was the best. And it was the best, man. I, I was actually watching the, uh, do you guys remember the game with the Giants and the Saints where there was 13 touchdowns? Beckham had three of them. You had Marcus Colston and Brandon Cooks. And like I was watching this game with Breeze, and it's like, man, they had so many weapons. C.J. Spiller was on the Saints. It was, it was crazy. Um, but otherwise, you know, Chase Claypool right now is too risky. It's too risky unless you are a deeper league, multi-flex. Ayuk then, or Chase Claypool? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm going to play Brandon Ayuk this week. I'm going to do it. Okay. It doesn't – that didn't feel good. That didn't feel <laughs> – does somebody have a bucket? I need a bucket. Um, I would play Chase. Yeah, no, just screw that. Play Chase. <laughs> play Chase Claypool over Brandon Ayuk. That is the correct answer. Sorry, guys. I want to apologize. <laughs> you can check out all of our rankings if you have start sit decisions. We have a start sit tool. We have a ton of tools over on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. So you got to check them out. It is time for the fantasy faceoff. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. All right, I'm so happy to report that Jason lost last week. It was not me, and I wasn't in studio to even pay out my wheel of shame. That is yeah, you still haven't you haven't accepted your, your second loss? You will. Oh, yeah. I you know I will. will. I know. I, I'm just banking it. But um, but I didn't lose this past week. Mike no, I, was I victorious. I had Derrick Henry, and uh, so yeah. I lost. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, Mike and I were pretty darn close. Mike snuck out the win. We've got rosters for this week, but let's go ahead and spin that wheel first. Wheel of Shame. I hope I just land on goatee. <laughs> I feel like I'm already doing it. Oh, 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 oh. The shame is already there. All right, let's give her a spin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. We got farmer's hat. No. Fake mustache. No. <laughs> oh, 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 really? 90s tough guy. Well, this certainly goes with my goatee. Oh, Could, my gosh. What is 90s tough guy? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, what is he, what, Mike, did, what got, did he just get thrown? You got to describe that this, Mike. Is, that, yes. Uh, so he will be starting with the first part of his costume, which is supposed to be a bald cap. It's, it's pretty see-through. Uh, but he's a transparent uh, cap. But the, the bald cap, not doing its full job, but he'll be going with a bald cap and a giant gold chain. With a goatee. <laughs> with a goatee. Yeah. Okay. We've got a 90s <laughs> tough guy. The glasses up, are really dude? betraying this a little bit. <laughs> well, let's ditch the glasses here. Oh, right. yeah. There we go. Now it looks oh, like a pirate. Oh, yeah. you, know, you, you look like a, a, w, a, a 90s WWF guy or WWE. Is that the I'm worst ball? Is that the worst bald cap that's ever been made? This it, is this is <laughs> the, an unacceptable I mean, bald cap. I mean, you can I mean, see right through it. It's it's got like you've a got tail. Skin, your skin is coming off. It's like I can see the bald through the bald. Oh, oh you, did there. you already had a bald cap on, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's get to some lineups. Hmm? I'll start uh, us off. Yes, ridiculous. at the quarterback position. Oh, um, you look ridiculous. I am. I'm going back to the well that I lost with last week. It felt bad for most of the game. He ended up as the number one quarterback, though. I I have Josh Allen in my lineup against Jacksonville. Okay. Well, I I'll jump in real quick because I have Josh Allen in as my quarterback. I do not. I pivoted down slightly from Josh Allen. Uh, I have Lamar Jackson against the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. All right. Go ahead with your running backs, Jay. At running backs, I all, I have Zach Moss with uh, Josh Allen and Alvin Kamara paying up for uh, him as my number one running back. I have Austin Eckler and Dalvin Cook as my Oh, two. my goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, Those, sir. So you have Josh Allen. 
Cook and and uh, Austin Eckler. Those yes, were I my uh, so I originally built my lineup with Taysom Hill, and those were my running backs as well. So congratulations of doing it with Josh Allen, who you got at running back. Mike. I have canceled out Andy's Austin Eckler with my own, uh, and I've canceled out your Zach Moss with my okay, own. Okay, a lot of overlap here at wide receiver. I have Amari Cooper, T. Higgins, and Hunter Renfro. Oh, that's interesting. But you got I Andy. went. I went with the Josh Allen to Emmanuel Sanders stack to bounce back. Emmanuel Sanders cheaper this week. Then I went with Jarvis Landry. I went with Jarvis Landry okay. with the the exhale for the Cleveland Browns and uh, Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers. Whoa, there it is. There's that savings. Uh, I got Brandon Cooks taking on the Miami Dolphins. I also have Amari Cooper in there. And then I was I was supposed to have Devontae Parker in my lineup. And then this morning, the news came in, so I had to quickly pivot. And uh, with my quick selection, I went with Kadarius Toney against the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm, I don't mind that. At 5,200. All right. At tight end, I have Tyler Conklin. Conk, conk. No, okay. no surprise there. At flex, Keenan Allen um, paying up, uh, having a little bit better flex. And at defense, the Panthers against... Mac Jones. All right. I went with Dallas Goddard. I, I did pay up a little bit at the tight end position. I think it's going to be a huge week uh, for Dallas Goddard. I went with A.J. Dillon as my flex. Okay. Mm. That's interesting. A.J. Dillon. And then I saved a bunch. I went with the Chiefs. I okay. went with the Chiefs defense. Yeah, I think they I were one of the, ch the cheapest on the week, but opportunities for turnovers with Jordan Love. I don't blame you. Yeah, taking on Jordan Love. I got uh, Mark Andrews in my tight end spot because so, I wanted the Lamar Jackson stack with somebody, and Andrews has been just an absolute monster. I'm holding my breath. I'm going with Tajay Sharp here against oh, wow. the New Orleans Saints at okay. 4,200 for my flex, and then I have the Carolina Panthers as well at 2,600. Well, yeah, I'm not uh, – uh, after hearing all three of the rosters, I am not happy you both share Amari Cooper because he was in my lineup and then out – and then now, when he succeeds, I will fail. I, I but, missed your wide receivers. Who are your wide receivers? Because Emmanuel Sanders, Jarvis Landry, Brandon Ayuk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's why Brandon Austin Eckler, Dalvin Cook, da Dallas Goddard, and AJ Dillon. I had to. I had what, to. What I need, I need Jason uh, to complete the uh, the '90s tough guy. I need you to give, give me a uh, a cut of you're a WWF wrestler and you're talking trash. Uh, to the oh, rest. no problem, man. <laughs> Listen, my lineup's going to crush y'all lineups so hard you're going to have children that say, you're not my daddy. Where's my daddy? Give me that man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was outstanding. And, and to be clear, again, this bald cap looks like you peeled off some leg skin yeah. and just pulled it over your head. I mean, it, this is you have flaps of skin on the side. <laughs> It's more like a, 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 I'm going to rob a bank with pantyhose, but it, oh. it doesn't go over my face. <laughs> or you're about to go for a swim or something? Yeah, it I does mean, look like a swimmer's cap. Uh, which, 90s tough guys. I mean, come on. Uh, a reminder. In the back. Those were our week nine lineups. No, it looks like a latex glove. <laughs> you managed to get it That's on your head. That's true. That's All right, true. Yeah, I'm Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Download the DraftKings app. <laughs> Right now, and use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. There's a minimum $5 deposit required. <laughs> Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Wow. Oh, there's your spiky hair. Now, oh, now yeah, you're the, t man, now you're the tough guy. Oh, man. Wow. This is like a week. Can we end the show? Is this? Can we call Brooks, this? Brooks, can we good? end the show? Are we allowed to end the show? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's good we do that. What okay. if you join Mike on Sunday Live one hour before kickoff? Please do. That would be a good time, and Jason won't be there. <laughs> he will not yeah. be there. But ballerslive.com uh, ball if you want to do that. Okay, I think we did it. I think we finished the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we made it through. Thank you You're for so joining tough. us. For uh, my super tough colleague, for Andy Holloway. Oh, yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.